so you want to be a machinist, huh? There's a chance that you've been doing this all wrong. Today, we're going to talk about everything you need to know about tool holders. first thing I wanted to talk real quickly about is spindle connection types. Now there's a lot of different spindle connection types and a lot of different sizes and all these tools have their specific place. So here we have a BT30 holder. Now you notice this is a pretty small holder and you'll find this in machines like robo drills and Tormox and these machines make some super complicated parts but as you start moving up in size your tool holder size is going to grow as well. So here you can see the difference in size between a BT30 and a Cat40 holder. Now these are known as steep taper tools. Now these only have one surface that makes contact and that's the taper of the tool with the taper of your spindle. This allows for a little bit of run out and isn't gonna be the most rigid setup. Now Cat 40 holders have been around pretty much the longest and you'll see this in most common machines in a machine shop and machines like a DNM 5700. Now here we have a Cat 50 holder. If you compare this to our BT30, you'll see how much bigger this sucker is. Now this is what you're gonna see when you start getting into big machines like our NHM 6300 here. This provides a lot more taper contact, so you have a lot more rigid holder. And again, this is a dual contact holder, so now we have two faces that are making contact with our spindle. And now moving on, we have HSK style holders. So here we have an HSK 63. Now these are another dual contact style holder, but their mass is a lot less. So you're able to spin these a lot faster than you would be say a Cat 50 holder. Now the great thing about dual contact holders, in addition to the increased rigidity, is that you get better accuracy radially and axially. And again, the HSK style holders come in different sizes. So here we have an HSK 63, and here we have an HSK 100, and these get even bigger. Now, there are other types of spindle connections, including KM from Kenna Metal, and you know, this is a three-phase contact system, so it's even more rigid and accurate. But we don't have the time to go over every single spindle connection out there, but this gives you a good overview of the most common types. So now that we've covered spindle connection types, we're gonna move on to actual holder types. Now, this is our tool end connection style. So I'm gonna start off by talking about the most common and cheapest tool holders that you'll find in a CNC mill shop. First up, we have a side lock holder. So these tools use a set screw to push your tool diameter against the ID of the tool holder. Now this creates some run out. So although these tools are great for not pulling out, they're not that good for accuracy. So if you're trying to hold tents on a part with very little run out, you're not gonna get it with one of these. Now most machine shops use these a lot and they're great for roughing, but they're just not that great for accuracy. In addition, the run out that they introduce isn't that great for tool life. So as you start getting into more accurate operations and start really caring about your tool life, you're gonna wanna be using a better Holder. Now next up, I want to talk about ER collet holders. These are a very versatile tooling system and you can hold tools that range from anywhere from 30 thousandths all the way up to an inch or better. The thing that makes these holders so versatile is that they come with all different size collets. Now the great thing about the ER collet system is the versatility. We have all different length tool holders and then we have all different size collets. Some of the most common of these are the ER16, the ER32, and the ER40, and a whole lot of other sizes. For each different collet size, you have a range of tools that you can hold in here. Now, ER collets are pretty good for run out. They give you a pretty equal distribution of pressure around your tool. However, there are some problems with these. You know, your collet can get kind of gummed up and there can be little particles or debris in there that end up introducing run out into your process. Another thing that you're gonna sacrifice with the ER style collet holders is rigidity. These things are good for doing, you know, medium roughing, but they're not that great for being aggressive with your roughing strategies. Another thing that adds to the versatility of these tools is that you can get ER extensions. <laughs> 
So now I have this tiny little tool here and I have an extension bar that has its own ER collet in it inside of a bigger ER32 holder. Now, like with anything else, as you start stacking up tool holders, you're gonna introduce variation, which is gonna affect your accuracy. So even though you get the extended reach that you may need for some operations, you're gonna have to sacrifice accuracy. And so moving up, we have milling chucks. Now these things have a lot higher torque transmission than the ER32 college systems. These tools are good for roughing, but you have to be careful because they are still prone to pull out. Now because again, we're using collets, we do have the flexibility of collet systems, so you don't have to buy quite as many holders, but you can buy a whole lot of collets. Again, an added benefit of using collet systems is to get even dispersal of pressure around the collet from within the holder. Mill chucks give you pretty decent rigidity, accuracy, and holding force. All right, so the holders that we just covered are what I consider to be group one. And these are kind of the baseline holders that you're going to find in most machine shops. They're versatile. You got a lot of different options when using these. But when you start getting into more advanced parts and tighter tolerances, you're going to need a more advanced holder. You're also going to need a holder with better torque transmission as you start getting into more aggressive roughing strategies. Now, next up, we have shrink fit. Now, these things give you great holding force and they also give you good reach. So if you're getting into complex five axis work, the nice thing about these, they don't have any bolts, they don't have any big bulky clamping mechanisms. So that allows you to have a really small end of tool. Now, because of the availability of the slim body chucks, you may notice Jesse using these quite a bit over on our DVF 5000. Shrink fit holders are gonna give you good accuracy and good concentricity with very little run out. Now, in order to use a shrink fit holder, you have to have a shrink fit machine like the Heimer unit that we have here in our tool crib. Personally, I love that thing. Now moving on, we have hydraulic holders. And these are my favorite because they offer you the best torque transmission, radio runout, dampening capability, and high speed capability. Now you might remember that these were the types of holders that me and Titan used over when we were doing the aluminum hydroform block. Now there's a difference between these two holders. This is a regular hydraulic holder and this is a hydroforce holder. Now, if I had to give these things a rating of five stars for torque transmission, a regular hydraulic holder would probably get about three stars where the Hydroforce holder gets a full five stars. Now, something that makes the Hydroforce holder even more impressive is that you can add in the safe lock system. So you see, we have two components here. We have our safe lock collet, and this actually screws down into the holder. Then inside the collet, we have the safe lock grooves that engage into the safe lock grooves on our cutting tool. What this does is make pullout absolutely impossible. And to take this thing even a step further, you'll notice that we have through coolant holes in our collet. And you know, we can take it even a step further now that I see this tool. We can add in the dual lock feature so that we have a small carbide insert that screws into our cutter body. Now what this allows you to do is you only have to buy a small piece of carbide whenever it's time to change out a cutter and you don't have to remeasure your tool every time you replace your insert. Now this is my favorite holder type and it gives you the best of everything. We offer this tool in our online store so if you want to go beast mode pick one up and add it to your arsenal. So that covers most of our commonly used day-to-day -day holders. And there's a ton of other holder styles out there. Things like face mill arbors, you know, you have the little keys, you have the arbor, you put a bolt in the end of your face mill. There's thread mill arbors, just like this one that we used on the big 4140 part. You may remember I refer to these as my shark teeth, just like a shark. So let's go chomp out some threads. And there's a ton of other holder types. But before we go, I wanted to talk about two other types of holder that we have here. The BTF46 adapter system. The BTF46 adapter system is something that I thought was really, really cool because you're able to have a modular tooling system that uses different spindle connection types with different types of cutting tools. So if I have a CAT50 machine and I have an HSK100 machine, I can buy an adapter for both machines and then only one cutting tool if I want to. Now, I really like this tooling system and I just wanted to give it a shout out. Now we have dampen holders. 
to do a video with this in the really near future, but these things are super cool, especially if you're doing some more complicated mold work where you need a lot of reach, but you need a good surface finish. Now you notice this tool is almost 12 inches long. I mean, this thing's not short. Now the way that this tool provides dampening is it has a tungsten core that moves up and down to adjust the harmonics of the cutter body. What this allows you to do is to adjust your tool to the specific harmonics of your machine and your machine frame so that you can still get a good finish even though you have a tremendous amount of stick out. Now another thing that these dampened tool holders are good for is plunge milling because a lot of times you're going to need that extended reach so that you can plunge all the way down the side of your part. Well, that wraps up our video on holders for today. So I hope you guys liked today's video and I hope I was able to clear up some of the common misconceptions and when and where to use each of these holder types. If you guys learned something and you know somebody else who could stand to gain from this information, please share it with them. Hit that like button, full slot that subscribe button, ring the bell, and then leave me some comments down below if you have any more questions and I'll see you there.